I've played a lot of video games in the last 30 years. Yep, it's been exactly 30 years since I started playing video games, and I've never, ever, ever listened to more than three Sonic tracks in my entire life. I know, it's shameful, but today we're gonna change that. Today we're listening to 10 to 11 of the greatest Sonic songs that you asked me to listen to. By the way, my name is Marco. I am a former professional opera singer that loves talking about video game music from an emotional perspective after a decade on the stage. First up is Escape from the City, City Escape, Sonic Adventure 2. I was expecting something like Green Hill Zone or something a little bit more not this. This is so interesting to me because it really obviously relies on a very bright positive sound. I think that the the slap bass that we hear in the back pretty much the entire time is, is really like such a awesome grounder for this piece. This piece has so much emphasis on motion, which obviously makes sense despite not knowing anything about Sonic. All of these characters move quickly. All these characters are really fast. All these characters are really efficient. And I assume that because of this sound that Sonic is a really playful character. Can you Tell me if I'm right. There, there's there's an elegance in this music, but it's really it's really more about like hell yeah, let's go, and that's really the vibes. You know what I mean? Like it's not about like drama, but it's about like oh you're fine. And also in the way that the lyrics also like kind of hit you on the head. They're they're pretty direct. There's not a lot of prose in that. Like it's very much like hey. Let's escape from the city. Follow me. Like, and, and, and again, that bright quality is very present. I really wasn't expecting that. Is it my favorite song? No, by no means. Uh, that's not a, so a style of music I really like. Okay, let's see if this keeps up. Uh, Mystic Cave Zone from Sonic the Hedgehog 2. <laughs> Thank you. 
What's wild to me about this piece is that Sonic the Hedgehog 2 came out in 1992, if I if I Google, has it led me astray. And what's really interesting is how sophisticated and how advanced the sound really feels. Like, this is multiple harmony pieces in here, uh, really clear emotional, uh, like, focus there. You know, obviously, with the upper register notes, we feel like we're in a cave, we can feel the cave, but also there's a bit of playfulness in the da da ba ba da ba da ba and that's not dissimilar to that one song. You know what I mean? And that kind of feels like Here Comes the Clowns. And so in a weird way, this track, again, much like the one right before this one, um, Escape from the City, this feels still with this bright, sort of playful sound. I never attributed Sonic with playfulness. Like, so coming from the Nintendo world and coming from the bright, sort of warm sound and very comfortable melodic sound of Super Mario Bros. That's a very different soundscape than Sonic's Sonic's musical representation, if that makes sense. And so that may end up being the overarching theme of these next 10 tracks. And I'm here for it because bright music is always welcome and also like really, really nice to listen to. I'm really impressed by how focused it was uh, on, a, on a story through music and like showcasing the cave, showcasing the weird um, creatures floating around. Like it, it just had a levity about it that was just really... Uh, nice to listen to and also like felt a little silly. Let's listen to Can You Feel the Sunshine from Sonic R. Oh, I love this percussive rhythm here. I love this. Oh my god that harmony is so indescribable you almost can't hear it that is so cool hold on i love this track can you feel the sunshine da -da -ba -da 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 -da. that is such oh again a bright warm playful energy and i think like that's part of the thing about sonic is that it moves at such a pace and sonic moves so quickly that there's no real like i'm sure there's a slow song in here and i'm hoping there's a slow song in here just for variety but like this is so effervescent obviously right there's a bright tone in there there's a warmth her voice is so rich and yet because of the rhythm it has an uh, like a, a speediness to it that gives way to a really really like beautiful uh, almost relaxed effervescence and uh, that's really special but listen how tight this harmony is you can barely hear it Not there. I also think it's really cool that we repeat ourselves a bunch so that the the the, the scope here is that the lyrics are the focus, right? The, the lyrics are front and center and the melody. So underneath you have this right? Really the crux of this, can you feel the sunshine? It's brighter every day. Da -da -da -ya -da -da -da. That's really kind of contained. It doesn't go in crazy ranges so that you can't fully understand it. It is layered in a way that you're like, yeah, can I feel the sunshine? Because of where it sits in her range as well, there's a natural sense of understanding and, and vibing with it rather than if it was like all over the place and going up and register and stuff. That's a really important thing that I think is, is easy to miss. Like that's a really well-written song. There's a mixture of warmth and speed and brightness that keeps it like bubbling. You know what I mean? It's, it's wow, that's awesome.
Wait, I also love that. There's nothing for me to do. <laughs> It's so syllabic, and by syllabic I mean that there's a syllable, there's there's a a, a, a part of a word on every single uh, pitch. Uh, pitches are are you know the notes, and so on every single pitch there's the brighter that every day. Like it's interesting. There's not a lot of necessarily legato until we get to the big chorus. I think it, that's that's. I think that also helps with the speed. Like there. Can we, can we talk about how clever it is to go bright a day? Sorry, forgive me for singing like a skeleton beast, but it's so charming. And that that little re-emphasis of brighter day, brighter day, it helps us feel like, hell yeah, man, it is a bright day. You know what I mean? Like key change but but just to highlight the juxtaposition here listen to the background listen how crazy this is because we actually are moving forward even though this is kind of like a chill slower section listen to this listen right hell yeah i can Oh yeah. <laughs> Can you feel, it? feel what? Oh. Can you feel, Can you feel it? it? Can you feel the sunshine? Samba? Oh my god, that's awesome. Now we're back in it. God, I love everything about that. Now that that is a piece that you are never going to listen to and be depressed. Well, I mean, you could be depressed and listen. Well, point is that like that's wonderful. That's so enthusiastic, so energetic. It's just the ultimate like vibe song. It goes very hard, and and I think it goes hard in a way that like is it, it brings it, it just 
sparks so much like life. And that's the cool thing about music is that music can spark life. Music can can feed the soul. I mean, like that's the whole point of it, right? Let's listen to uh, With Me from Sonic and the Black Knight. I don't know what this is. harmony in there as well. What's really cool about this is the heavy metal emphasis and i think what's really satisfying is that the the music and the lyrics now this is obvious but they are so synonymous they need each other to coexist there's something really fun that occurs in this where at one point you get a double bass drum and the double bass drum really helps punch home the idea that this is a conflict right this piece is about conflict this piece is about navigating something difficult lyrically too what i think is really interesting is it's all about like standing up for oneself. My eyes are filled with curiosity. You think that you have power over me. In this life, there's no room for you and me. So turn away or face this day with me, with me. Face the day with me. You know every world will have its test. Don't blame for what I have become. You know every world will come to an end and I'll create your final rest. There's a curiosity in battle there. What I think is really satisfying about it is the metal aspects of it. And I have not heard ever in my life a metal uh, Sonic song. And so that's 
that's cool. I'm also, again, kind of shocked at how much lyrical music there is and how much like storytelling there is through word in these pieces. And I'm confused and I have questions that I will ans ask later. But I, I just think that this is very, very, very cool. In my mind, The Black Knight, there's a sort of medieval aspect to this. And I'm, now I'm intrigued about the gameplay because I'm like, huh? Let's listen to Studiopolis Act 1 from Sonic Mania. Damn, okay. Oh, nice. Love that big band sound. Whoa! Piano jazz? Piano improv here? Oh my god, that's so cool. With a little bit of eight sound in there. Oh, that's so good. This must be a casino level, because it sounds like casino. But the beginning was like big band. Damn, these chords are so cool. We're like glissandi everywhere, sliding around. I love that melody, man. Oh man, that's so good. So that's very much, very much my speed. This is very much something that is incredibly satisfying to listen to. It's very much my speed. It's very fun. I love the big band slash jazz, like improvised soundscape in there. Also, again, we have a continued moving forward. There's a constant drive. In fact, the previous track was the slowest one in terms of like feeling like it was really about a battle. This one and all the other ones that have come before have all been about moving through with an intensity and direction of rhythm. This one I think is my favorite one I've listened to so far, Studiopolis Act One, because there's a there's a bounding energy, but like the horns are a different soundscape. So the horns make it feel a bit richer, a bit brighter, a bit more like, yeah, you got this, man. Like it's I'm thinking like 1920s soundscapes. And and it's just like it's just so there's so many different layerings in here. It's a really satisfying piece. That one was awesome. Jungle Joyride Night from Sonic Unleashed. Cello? What the hell? There's every genre in Sonic. Oh, I like that. Wait, wait, wait. 
Wait, before we keep going, first of all, what the fuck? What the hell? Like, that's insane. How? Why are there so many genres? That's crazy. Nothing is the same. I've li I'm not bored. I've listened to four tracks and all of them have different soundscapes. That's amazing. First of all, love the cello. Very human sound, by the way. Second of all, notice underneath, there's that still that constant movement. We're never slowing down. There's always the speed element. And every one of these tracks so far, besides the Black Knight one, constant feeling. And even that one, let's be real. All of them have had forward momentum. That's cool. That's a cool thing to think about. <laughs> Oh my God, that's great. Wow, beautiful lower piano chords in there, huh? I love, I love how the piano, the, the piano, the pi <laughs> I love how the piano and the cello uh, are helping each other. And even though we have that forward momentum underneath, we do have the piano and the cello driving it forward in a call and response. They're chatting with each other. They're having a conversation. That's cool. They're supporting each other. Almost like uh, almost like Sonic and Tails, right? There's a, there, or Sonic and not, well, it's not cool. Are they friends? Are they cousins? What are they? Um, uh, uh, Sonic and Tails, it's almost like they're supporting each other, right? It's cool. Gosh. I love the long, sh the short long of that. Rhythmically, da 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 ba ba long. Nice sustain over this rhythm. Wow, a little bit of dissonance. Just ever so slight dissonance. Playing a note out of the key structure.
Wow, that is terrific. That is the best song I've listened to today. There is so much heart and soul in that piece. And also this piece, I think because of the clash, first of all, the middle section with the piano, profoundly good, profoundly good. There's something really cool about that is that the inside of that, that sandwich of sound, it feels really honest. And I think like the cool thing about music is that music can never lie to you. And so one of the things that's really satisfying about this particular piece is that the ethos of it is really personal. I think the warmth of the cello, and then of course the slight upper range in the piano, there, there's a, a delicacy in that that I wasn't expecting to hear out of sonic music. Now we still are moving forward. We're never stopping there, right? But that warmth, is really what took it for me. And the fact that we have that short, 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 long. It's such a fun rhythmic gesture. And again, that cello is just sublime. I mean, there, there's, there, there really feels like it's a, a passionate piece about like coming to age or like uh, uh, emerging out of the shadows and, and be choosing to become something uh, like good. I loved that theme. Holy crap. That is like going on my playlist. Planet Wisp Act 1 from Sonic Colors. A lot of unison movement. Da -da 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 -da. Nice sustain and then rhythm. Ba -da. Hell yeah. Again, nice piano again. We've got a lot of bass in the background too. Some doubling in there as well. Whoa. Got that slap bass in the background. I find it interesting how much we're repeating this pattern. It's almost meditative. It could be perceived as boring or repetitive, but it's very charming, very charmingly simple.
Man, I'm having so much fun. Like, this stuff is so cool. And, like, that one, I mean, it certainly is excessively repetitive. Now, in context, it's probably perfect. Sonic Colors is actually a game I've always wanted to try. Uh, I'm not sure what's going on with the Steam uh, Steam reviews there. There's something something up with the with the remaster or whatever. But, but I have to say, like, what am I going to say? Bright, effervescent, pushes through. But there's a gentility in that piece that I really liked. And also, I think that the repetitive motion of it is really satisfying because it feels like we're doing a lot of loop-de-loops and we're moving a lot. And I think it really works. I mean, like, it's a really satisfying, simple, elegant, piece that is just so 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 nice and and it, it genuinely just like puts you in a good mood like I woke up pretty early today and because of listening to that I feel like I feel pretty good like I'm like all right yeah this is awesome and again simple melodic motion never ever a bad thing let's listen to catch me if you can from Sonic Riders Zero Gravity okay Rap? It's like Lincoln Park, no. Nice motivic center. Yeah, I mean, this song like throws me back to my high school days. Like this has very much distinctly like Linkin Park vibes. And again, what I'm what I'm actually consistently blown away by by every one of these tracks is that how different the genres are. There's like no rules when it comes to sonic music. And I think that's really cool. I mean, you may not like every one of these songs. Like the style of all of these is so uniquely different from itself. So I mean, like you might be like, well, I'm looking for something a little bit more homogenized or which means, you know, sort of similar. Is that what it means? Homogenized. 
used. Made uniform or similar. Oh, the big words. And I think that, that there are other games out there that have a real unified sound, which I think that that's fine as well. But what's cool about this is that you're getting something new all the time. And then now this to me, the motivations of Catch Me If You Can, like this is obviously like a slower paced piece. It's not rhythmically fast in terms of tempo. It's pretty slow. And what's cool is that this, I mean, it's not too slow, but what I like about that is that it's really an emphasis on like, dude, I'm Sonic. Like, catch me if you can, man. Is it my favorite song? No, by no means. Uh, I don't I don't wish to go back to my my high school days at all. However, um, you know, it was nice to listen to that. And again, I'm just so blown away by these genre differences that every single one of these has brought. This is in a cosmic eternity. Believe in yourself. Sonic CD. What is that? So melancholic almost. Oh, hey, funky. Now, how many tracks can we listen to on any given day that are actually going to inspire and motivate us to get up and believe in ourselves when we're having a hard day? That is fascinating. That's like classic 90s hip hop telling me to believe in myself. And boy, I certainly do. Listening to all of this music has been actually really interesting and I'm genuinely inspired to hear more Sonic music. Not only the thematic vocal themes, but also the themes of, you know, the overworlds. There's so much that I just do not know. And in fact, my community post about this got 400 comments plus, I think. And so there's clearly a rabid group of people that really appreciate Sonic music. And I think I may slowly be coming over to the dark side and becoming one as well because the sheer variety on display here means that anytime I get something, I'm going to be enthused and amused. Can't help but enjoy that. And I can't help but appreciate how much versatility and variety there is in this music. If you like this, we should do it again. Let me know in the pinned comment below which tracks you'd like me to listen to next. And as always, thanks a ton and I'll see you later. Bye.